So my father says that he remembers the day that I told him I was interested in engineering because we were taking a walk. And I said, you know, I think I want to switch to engineering out of chemistry, which is what I was majoring in. And he said, you do? What do you want to major in? I said, I want to do material science. And he said, why? I said, because I like to think about how things are made and what they're made out of. My research primarily addresses the environmental aspects of how we can use chemistry to improve the carbon footprint and reduce the environmental impact of cement and concrete production. The cement and concrete, we call it the glue, um, but officially it's the binder in the concrete. So if you imagine going to the beach and making a sandcastle and you pack sand and water, as soon as the water dries out, your sandcastle has no substance. It's, it, it won't hold its shape. So cement, the, its role in the concrete is to provide that strength and to provide that shape that the water and the aggregate on their own could never possibly do because they um, have no what we would call binding capacity. Concrete is the, most, the world's most used building material. We're making 20 billion tons of concrete per year globally. And for that 20 billion tons of concrete, we're making about 3 billion tons of cement globally for, you know, per year to satisfy that concrete need. For every ton of cement you produce, you're producing a ton or 0.8 or 0.9, however you want to call it, tons of CO2. And part of that is the most prevalent mineral we use to make cements is limestone and limestone's calcium carbonate. And when you heat that up in the cement kiln to make cement, it turns into CaO. So you're essentially, for every unit of CaCO3, you're releasing a unit of CO2 in the kiln inherently. I think it works out to be 44% of the mass of the calcium carbonate that you put in is released as CO2. We use a lot of it, therefore any contribution to greenhouse gases or energy use is going to be huge compared to other materials that are used in a, less, a lower quantity. In our laboratory, we are doing work on looking at the performance of fly ash and concrete on a lot of different levels, but in my lab in particular, I'm looking at making geopolymer concrete that's made out of 100% fly ash mixed with an alkaline solution and no cement as the binder. So it's a fly ash alkaline solution aggregate concrete. Um, so the binder, the solid part of the binder is completely made out of a waste material. And so that in that type of concrete, the environmental footprint's reduced because you're not using the cement, the natural resources, to make the concrete in that portion of the concrete mixture. We cannot live in cities unless we have civil architectural and environmental engineers. It's, it's essentially the underlying basis of how we as humans inhabit the earth because we need people who take the knowledge we gain from science, which is expanding so rapidly, to take that knowledge and implement it to solve the world's problems. In my laboratory, as material scientists and engineers, we take that understanding and we try to make a better cement and concrete out of it.